G'day folks and thanks for tuning back into the Project Boat series. Well, once again, I'm stuck in the boat on another day. Just to quickly catch you up on where we're up to. So in the last episode, we finished uh, gluing down the floor. We've screwed it with 316 stainless screws. I've gone through and replaced all those with a heavier gauge as well. So they're really holding it down nicely. It's glued down with talc and resin. And what I've done is bogged up around the edges where there was any overhang, places like that with talc and resin. And what I'm about to do is lay a radius around the corners with cabasil and resin. And that's sort of your peanut butter mix, I guess, whatever you want to call that, but it's that's cabasil and resin. And I've got some VE resin mixed up with some chop strand mat ready to do some tabbing on the edges. So over the top of that, um, radius and I find when I'm doing my radius is that it's nice and easy to lay the radius wet and then go wet straight over it with your chop strand mat and that just uh, prevents any further sanding so if you can do it as you go um, I find personally that's the way to go all right guys I'm gonna jump straight into this one and smash it out <laughs> tabbed in on the corners there. I've still got a glass over the edge at the front and just in the bilge well there as well. I'm just gonna leave this as one tabbed layer. And then what I'm gonna do is actually uh, sand and prep the floor for a priming coat of resin. So I'm gonna coat it in resin, let that cure off. Uh, now it's an unwaxed coat obviously because we're laminating with it. So it's not gonna fully cure, but it's gonna give me a really good base to stick to. So if you want 100% uh, good lamination uh, you should prime this thermalite board you don't have to as long as you do your surface prep right but if you want this board to bond as best as you can and obviously it's a lot more time consuming because you need to uh, prime it first let that cure come back the next day and then glass over top so that's the plan I'll then lay out all the fiberglass and make sure I've got everything cut perfectly ready to go and then I'll lay down one side lay down the other side um, to prevent just cross-contamination with uh, just tracking sort of dirt and things in there because you just don't want any organic properties, um, timber, uh, dirt, anything like that that can get under the laminate. Um, it can create bubbles in the resin even after it's cured. So it can look like it's all hunky-dory uh, and then the bubbles uh, will come even after a good 12 hours of curing or during that 12 hours of curing. So. Uh, you won't actually see them while you're rolling them out because they won't be there and they will form after the fact, which I have seen that before. And depending on where it is, may not be a huge issue. Um, but obviously for any lamination, you do want to get rid of all of that air bubbles to get that 100% bond. You'll notice something different about the boat if you look around the bottom here. And what I've done is taken the trailer out and I have chocked the boat on the ground so it's dropped at about a foot which gives me headroom which is something you've heard me complaining about now I still don't have a huge amount but in between the rafters I can stand up straight and it's only a little duck to get under there now so that's a huge huge win for me now I just do want to touch on chocking the boat this is something that I probably should have done from the beginning really um, my idea of building on the trailer was to keep it mobile because at that point I didn't have access to a shed kindly my grandfather thanks Bruce he has let me uh, take over his shed basically and use uh, use this until till the builds sort of complete or to a stage where we can can take it outside and and, and finish it uh, so that's been a huge help for anyone at home I would not recommend trying to do it under a Bunnings tarp or anything like that it's just crazy like you really need a sheltered workshop uh, 
and not a sheltered workshop uh, in uh, a mental capacity. Uh, definitely not. Uh, although, you know, uh, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed and look at me, I'm, I'm getting away with it. So anyway, um, look, uh, I'll prep this floor and get stuck into it. You gotta love this suit and grinding, I tell ya. Uh, so up next, I'm gonna go around and just fill all these holes where I've screwed those 316 stainless screws into the outer stringer. Now, um, I've countersunk those down a couple of mils so we can put a little bit of bog over the top and then we'll uh, glass over the top of that. So that will fully seal those screws off and yeah, it really means no water's gonna penetrate through and get into the stringers. Even if it does, it's probably not a huge deal. It's vinyl ester resin and thermalite. So, but uh, we'd rather be on the safe side. So that's what we're going to do. You'll notice there guys, I did two washes with the acetone. It's just because after sanding and blowing with the compressor, which is a great way to get rid of those uh, granules of, of thermalite. Now I sanded that with 40 grit. So that's enough to key it up for the uh, resin to bond. Now I'm gonna go along, as I mentioned before, and fill all these little holes, but obviously these process is to prep it first. And that's why I, I did the acetone wash and I did a two stage acetone wash. So I went over once and then again with clean rags again. So I used about a liter and a half of acetone there to clean that surface area. Now it's important to get it really good. Now I guarantee there's probably still bits and pieces down there still, but the cleaner you can get that surface, the better bond you're gonna get. Now, uh, after two, two runs at it with the rags and the acetone, it's pretty good. up nicely good nice layer of resin on there we'll let that cure overnight and tomorrow give it a quick acetone wash and then we'll lay straight over the top of that with chop strand mat and start building up our three layers over the floor we're going to do so 450 chop 600 db or double bias and then another layer of 450 chop now you notice at the end i was doing a little bit of glassing down here because i i did uh have a little bit extra material the glass all laid out three layers there 450 chop 600 double bias and 450 chop now my plan never done this before and what I'm finding is walking on this unwaxed resin you can see I'm just bedding in glass fibers and I have been crawling around on top of the glass these clothes are clean so don't stress about that but what I think I'm going to do is put some malamine boards down this side and I'll just walk on those um, and that'll just stop the impregnation of any foreign particles into that resin. I am going to have to give that a good clean now. But what I'm going to do with the laying of the glass is I'm actually going to peel all three layers. So I'm going to leave everything in situ. I'm going to peel all three layers up and back to halfway there. Then I'm going to prep and clean that surface 
And then one at a time, I'll lay a 450 chop, the 600 double bias, and the 450 chop. Obviously consolidating in between each layer and uh, rolling it out. And hopefully I'll catalyze, like I'll under catalyze a little bit, maybe closer to the 1% mark rather than the percent and a half. And that way it'll give me plenty of working time. It's a nice cool day. A lovely winter's day here in the south coast of New South Wales with a nice southerly breeze blowing. So uh, it's certainly um, good conditions for longer working times. Now, it is going to be tricky, but I think I can get it done. Worst case is, is if, it, if we fuck up here, I'll have a little bit of grinding to do and we'll go again. Well, that was a little bit of a disaster. Trying to do that fold halfway along is definitely not the right way to do it, guys. I did, it was very wishful thinking on my behalf that that's how it would work. But once you uh, wet out one side and then you try to fold the other side back over, what it does is it picks up the glass and uh, the chop strand mat that's already wet out, it just does not want to form uh, where it was previous to you moving it. But also, um, you just put a lot of air in there and, and no matter how many times I roll this one particular bubble out there, it just keeps forming back up. So what I'm gonna do is, I've got a little bit of resin left over. I'm just gonna uh, throw some uh, wax into that and wax in styrene and I'm gonna coat uh, this surface. Only the surface, not up the sides because we're just gonna leave that as laminating uh, resin for the time being but what I want to do is cure the floor off completely tonight so I can actually walk on this side but also it's going to make it easier to sand those air bubbles out patch those spots well it's the morning and all in all this has fared pretty well considering the uh, bit of a cock up we had now there's one decent air bubble there a couple of smaller ones through here and one up here but all in all it's actually come out much better, much, much better than I anticipated, uh, given that that whole folding of the glass back over design that we just didn't work. But anyway, 
For this side, I'm gonna lay one sheet down at a time, so I'm gonna cut them out, and I'll lay them one sheet down at a time, lay the whole sheet, roll it out, lay the next one, roll it out. Well, that worked a lot better that time. No, just half and half worked a lot better, so there's a little bit of a, a valley in there from where the joint is, but um, we can tend to that with some more chop strand mat, or even, uh, even fair it out a little bit with some uh, fairing compound or or resin cabasil and gel coat mixed up together with some wax or something like that so i've wax coated the lot i've also done a liberal wax coat up the middle there because i'm going to sand that uh one more time before i uh fix up the middle there and do the finishing touches to the floor tomorrow but essentially that's it floor is basically in and almost finished uh, the, obviously the finishing touches later will be flow coat and a speckle but I'm really happy with where it's at now it's a good feeling to have this done and dusted on that note this is probably a good place to leave this one again thanks again for tuning in guys I really appreciate uh, all the support you guys are giving me it's really keeping me motivated to hook into this build and as always don't forget to hit that like button if you like the video subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when we post content. All right, guys, until next time, stay safe out there.